Hey residents of Meeple Town, today we are chancellors oh, at our oh, own universities. Oh, Oops. Trying to Oops. build up. I need, I need to go to the university <laughs> to know how to turn. Oh, trying to build up and have the best institution that we can create. So let's get to the table and check out Alma Mater. All right, Meeple Town, we have Alma Mater set up and my university is going to be the most prestigious. There's no doubt about it. That's the, that's the name of the game here, is we have a prestige track. It's John's University. Victory point track. Whoever scores the most is going to win the game. There was a lot of heavy scoring at the end of the game, but you can get some points. You can get some decent points. Yeah. Depending yeah. on how you're, if you're playing well or not in the middle of the game. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to have... Whoa. We're going to have these masters right here. And we're going to do one of two things on our turn. We're either going to send a master or masters out to these worker placement spots or we're going to give a lecture but we don't have any professors right now so we cannot do that um dean and i did start the game off we didn't want to go through the setup so we could just kind of dive right in but there is a drafting setup and you're going to get what's on three of these cards so we went ahead and did that that's why we have some books here that's why we have some money dean also screeched up this track with his setup, which is pretty nice. I did. That's After really you nice. take those, you're actually going to draft from these cards. And yes. the one that I got, I'll go ahead and throw that up there. Allowed you to. Um, yeah, so this one allowed me to go ahead and get um, three additional setup cards and choose one, one of those. And then every time I take a professor, I'll be so able to use to a professor. I'll be able track. to use it and get a point. Yep. All right, I'm going to slide these over here, actually. All so, right. all right, so we're going to either send the masters out or use a professor lecture. And I, I say let's just dive in. I mean, we're going to be getting students that are going to go onto our boards here. We're going to be getting professors that can give us lectures and do um, bonus actions, go grab some money, buy books from other players or get dictionaries, go up this track. You'll be um, able to see a bunch of that stuff. Yeah, that so let's just now, go. One of the things we did, did not do during setup, we're going to do that now. This is going to be, what's his name? Ignotus. Ignotus. So in a two-player game, you're going to draw a card and throw that on there, and this one is going to move him three up on that track. If you don't remember his name again, I'm going to send you Ignotus. an Ignotus about it. Okay. Then take two of his books and put them on there, and then he will be on those three spots. Uh, I don't Whoa. have his meeples. You have his meeples. I do have his meeples. All right, so we got the... Boom. Oh, man, it's messed up the whole track right the there. Come Alpha, on. Epsilon, and Theta right there. Or Omega, if you were me earlier. There we go. When I saw that O. All right. Oh, my. And that is me. I will get to go first. And on my turn, I, unfortunately, I have a decent amount of money. That guy. He's, he's already falling Actually, over. let's do that for the... We'll throw them down there. Let's play them down. I don't have very many books of other people's um, colors, and I really need those. Now, John doesn't have any. Ignotus does. His are expensive, but I think I'm going to have to do that, and I'm going to buy both of them. So I'm going to take my worker, I'm going to put it down in this spot here, and that's going to allow me to buy from one other person's bookshelf. So Ignotus, I will buy your books for $7. If this was John, this money would go to him. It's not. That's right. And then Which I get one to, you want to flip over. I will take the second one. This one. Okay. Flip that one over. And that will give me two points, whatever points are on that tile that you're buying from. And that will remain flipped over for the entire duration of the game. That's right. Man, this is interesting. You done? Yep. So I do have some books. I have a couple options here. I can come here and get some students. They can help me do some engine building. But I could also come over here. The challenge is Oleg Notice is taking this spot. Yeah. And I would really like to get professors because what my power is, is I don't have to pay books. You usually have to pay a book for a lecture. You'll see that here in a second. The last game I played with this exact one, and I didn't use it well, Dean, and I lost. Yeah. So I almost feel like I really do need to come over here and do that. Though I wouldn't mind grabbing one of those suckers right off the bat instead of going down her. This guy's intriguing because he fills up your entire display, and at the end of the round, you get income based on that. That's just that's really hard to pass up, though, isn't it? Isn't that hard to pass up, Dean? It's hard to pass up, John. All right. So, so if there's already a worker there. I can go there, but I have to pay an extra worker. So if Dean wants to go there, he'd have to pay three, which would be quite the amount. Yeah. All right, so what I have to do now is I have to pay two of any kind, one of any kind, one of any kind. So I'm going to pay two greens, and also I'm going to have to pay five bucks. Now, the thing about this is from now on, Dean... Um, actually, I should have grabbed that. Dean does not have to pay the five bucks, but he does have to use the exact books that I did there. I take one book 
and I slide it right here. I put it on here. Now you initially get an immediate action if you want to for free. Um, so I am going to, you know what? I'm not going to do it because I don't have to. And my pow power says pay no books. So I'm going to leave. Should I leave this to where Dean? Here's a challenge in this game. I can leave this open to where Dean can't buy my books. But on the flip side, he can't buy my books and I don't get the monies from it. That's true. <laughs> so That's true. It's, it's, I'm kind of like... interaction is difficult. Yeah, sure. I kind of want to make it more difficult for you. But I don't know if you really even need my books this round. But I'm going to wait because I can do this anytime. You're going to wait? Okay. I'm going to wait. wait. <clears throat> okay, now what I really wanted to do is what exactly the same thing that John just did. And so I'm going to drop back and punt a little bit um, just to be able to set myself up. I think what I'm going to do is... Ooh, this is challenging. John's got two there. I know which one John wants. John really likes this one, this student that gives you a dollar and a... I already have it. <laughs> uh, no, you don't. This one. Oh, oh. My, but you can't afford it either. I can't. So I, I do like that one. Get my I, income going. I would really like that as well. I'm going to take this one, though. It's going to cost me two books of any uh, uh, that are equal of level one or level two. However, in the first round... You don't have to pay attention to that. So it, this will be determined. Uh, the value of the book will be determined on how far we're up this track. Right at the end of each round. So I think what I'm going to do is spend. I've not done anything on that track. I will spend a book of mine and a book of theirs, and that that's kind of pricey, but I will get it, and immediately I will put this into this spot down here. Immediately I'll get two ducats. And then every time I place two a cots. student onto my we board, then I'm going to get an additional two coins. So I thought I might as well go ahead and do that. Yeah, That's that going to give me a little bit of an engine. Probably yeah. give you 10 coins or so. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to snake this spot with one or two guys. So, no, with one. With one of these. So whoever has the most in this bishop spot... We'll get to be first next round, but if we have the same amount, then whoever's the left most. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and hope that I get that. I do have an ability here that gives me one additional coin per guy that I have here or master that I have in here. The challenge is it also gives me a movement up here. When you see the gear and it's grayed out, you have to pay the cost. If you see a gear that's green, you get to move up this track for free. This game is all about timing. <laughs> it's it all about a lot all of stuff. about getting things <laughs> all lined up and get things in the right timing. Unfortunately, I don't have three books. I only have one book. Um, so, you know, I could... I mean, if I really wanted to, I could go there, get two of my books, and then be able to spend those to go... I'm just not... I don't think it's worth going up one on that track right now. Okay. So I'm not going to get that, but I will get two plus one, three Ducats. <laughs> oh boy. Ducat, Ducat, Duck it. Duck it. All right. I don't know if that's it either. That's just what I say. All right. I'm just going to keep screaming up. Down that just the... makes me think like quack, quack, just duck it. No, like duck, duck quack, duck, like quack. quack. It's like something's coming at your head. All right. I'm going to go here into my personal spot. I can buy up to six of my own books. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to buy three of my own books. Because I need to have a little bit of money. Uh, oh, actually, I can buy four. So I'm going to buy four of my own books. Let's try this again. I, I didn't realize I had an extra ducat there. I'm just going to say monies. Uh, so I'm going to buy four Cash money, of baby. those. And then I'm going to spend the rest of my money right here to move up on Jeez, this track one you love more going time. on that track. I do. I, well, I love... Taking this spot right here, but you took it, so I needed to little uh, make a little change there. And a change. So that's my entire turn. I bought my books, and now when you buy your books, you can either put them in here to um, it, as a as an engine builder, as a money engine builder, and in fact, or, or keep them here to spend them. In fact, I, I will do that. I do need to have a little bit to little income. One. I do need to have a little income because I'm not getting very much. So, so like Dean said, when you when you see this symbol with a star <clears> on the book, it's your own books and you have to make the decision right then and there. You can't later go, oh, well, I'm just going to move them up here or yeah. whatever. Yeah, because, which is, you know, for John, it's, with the the professor that he bought, it's not as big of a deal because yeah. he knows that he'll be able to put fill that bookshelf up. Yeah, so I'm going to go here and do the same thing Dean did. 
Um, I'm trying to debate how many books I want to buy of my own. I mean, the temptation is because it's one worker just to fill myself up with, man, buy five more books, have six of my own books, really be ready to roll. But my income, actually, my income is not going to be bad this round. It's going to be six. And then I'll be last on this track, so it will be eight already. So, yeah, what the hey? I'm going to go ahead and just fill her up. Fill, fill it up, um, fill it up, please. Yeah, because I can. Here's the thing. One, two, three. But what I'm going to do instead is I can go up this track because it's three of any type of book. So instead of taking six, I'm just going to take three and just slowly creep up that. Whoa! Easy there. <laughs> take it and easy. I'm also not going to fill them up here because I can do that for free, but I can't do it right now. Because it's Dean's turn. John's getting a little nervous. He's seen me moving up that track, and he he's not liking it. We'll he see. Wants to, he wants to try to do whatever you want to do, Dean. It's cute that you're trying to catch up to me on that track. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go here. Thank uh, you. Did you just say that I'm cute? Down. No, Thanks, no, no Dean. that action was cute. All mm -hmm. right, so I'm gonna go here to take. I, I probably should have thrown this up here earlier to show you what I'm buying every time. You know, whenever I do the video editing, it's really gross the way that you say that. You all you are, like, and I say it too. Like, <laughs> throw that up there. Is that weird? It just sounds like throw up. So that, obviously, lightning, as in most games, means I immediately get a uh, dictionary as well as a ducat. That's going to go here. I probably should pay for this, too. It's going to cost two of equal ones. I'm going to spend one of his and one of the black ones, one of the, what do you call it, Dic dictionaries. Man, you got two students. But it is, uh, let me throw that back up there. So now it's going to help me a little bit. Um, with this bottom part, that's the income. So during the income phase, I'll get one ducat as well as a dictionary and now when I place that let me throw this tile up there when I oh place my gosh. that every time I place a tile I'm going to gain two ducats which is why I bought that one at the beginning solid to set myself up got a little money you really need a big money engine in this game you do and it can be a challenge to do that it can be <coughs> all right so my next move is I'm gonna do a lecture now normally you have to pay the color book and the color book again that goes on here is what you spent the most of to purchase the the professor to lure the professor in, that's what I do, into my universities. Lure, lure them in. Pay them, just pay them. Pay them in books? Yeah, that's professors a, love that's books. Say, that's a smart professor, like, you know what, I don't even want money, just give me more books. So I okay. can be more smart. That's, that's, and then another that university can come and, can and be, pay me more books. can be more smart. That's the life. That's, how, that's the right way to say it, and do it. So John's going to fill up his bookcase there, which is going to be huge for making money for this next round. And that is going to, you've got, that one, John has one more worker. I don't have any more workers. I don't have any professors. I don't have another lecture. What are you talking about, Bo? Oh, no. sorry. I saw that over there. Yeah, yeah. All right. So after we do that, John's going to lead us through this, this bottom so part So we'll here. move this over to the second round. We're going to verify that we don't have too many books. And it's whatever, wherever your student is on the A row there. So I can only hold six books. I can hold seven, but I only have one. But you only have one. Then we're going to replace these. Now, this is going to change the value of the books, which really is interesting in the game. Because, for example, now that my books are worth the least, like they're the easiest ones to get, which would make this a lot harder and this a lot harder yeah. to be able to get these students. So that was a decision I made. So I'll have to live with it. Yeah. Make However, your banner, now you have to lie in it. That, that's a good thing for me. At the beginning of the game, you don't necessarily want to really be screaming up on there because you really need money. I'm not going to get any money from that book during the income phase. Get your workers back to your archive spot, uh, your masters. Um, actually, sorry. Whenever I, I did this wrong, I don't I don't move this up to here. This means that we were supposed to do the um, player order, which was me. Correct. Yep. So sorry, Dean had one. I had you had one on there. I did not. Have oh, you didn't. Okay. There. Yeah. Okay. And if he did, then I still beat him because I have the furthest left. Okay. Then we do the income phase, which is however many books you have up here times any hand that you have. And Dean showed that earlier. So, and plus this. So Dean gets no points for being the highest on that track. I do get two. So I get eight coins. Can you hear me? Eight coins. And, and so I'll have also, to reach over you. Oh, you don't get a dictionary this time. I don't. It's usually, usually you're the one getting that time. those dictionaries. Right yeah. Uh, for my ducats, I'm going to get two from there. I'll get... One from there, that's going to be a total of three. You like that, huh? Big time. I don't. I wish I had more money. Yeah, that's positive. All right. So that's it. That is one round. Now, I will mention that a lot of the in-game scoring happens. It's going to be things... Oh, wait. You didn't mention this thing. Oh, so yes. So the last point. part of this phase, Excellent once you get point. your income, is you're going to slide your books down. Yeah. So I just lost one of them. That's right. And then this new one that you had sitting off to the side is going to come out onto the board. And that's important because, again, those tiles are worth points if you're buying the books from people. That's right. And during setup, you get to set up your book rack however you want. And we would do that for 
Ignotus. Yeah, he has he has a special. He just goes two two one 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 one. Ignotus. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But anyway, all right. So, oh, before we do art and components, just really briefly, you're going to score points in this game. Mostly, it's going to have to do with uh, who's ever the highest on this track. Twelve in a two player game, twelve points for first, five for second, zero for third. You're going to multiply how far you're on this track times your professors. Your professors have prestige points. Your students could have prestige points over here in the mathematics department. You multiply your students times your students. You also could get these uh, bus cards. Sorry, took me a second to think about it. And so that's that, that's ways to however many have score points as well. So kind of a point salady. Very, very point salady. Yeah, very point salady. Just different ways to score points in this game. So, art and components are amazing. Uh, let you go. let you go. Are first. amazing. I, knew you. I love. 10 out of 10 because of the components. Well, the components are about 10 out of 10. Um, there's so many good things to say about the art and components of this. Starting off by, I'm just going to throw some of these some of these books up there. There's also a blue. Um, these are books, as you can see. They're little plastic pieces. They got little, They're awesome. little pages in there, little bindings. So that's, that's really cool. Love that. The art is amazing. I love, love the art on this one. Um, yeah, it, it's just like the, the board is a little blocked out because of all the cards and the tiles. I'm not saying that as a negative, but I'm saying like the art on the board is beautiful, but you're probably not going to pay that much attention to it because you're looking at the cards and the tiles, which also have beautiful art so on good. the box cover. It looks amazing. Um, card quality is, is great. Um, the tiles, all of it. And then you have the, the recess board. So. I challenge you to come up with anything else on our Yeah, no, I, I. You mean say something else? Anything. I covered it all. I mean, someone might say I don't like circle discs. <laughs> <laughs> Who would say that? You could say that it's cardboard money. You want miniatures. You want. You might want. You, you want. You want some real coins. Some real coinage, right? So that's a stretch. All that's so, a stretch. But yeah, the recess boards are a lot. They really the recess are boards. and necessary. And the, and the art's just fantastic. Dean's right. I mean, art and components, literally top notch. Yep. Love them. Yep. Totally agree. So, I'll let you but is the game with fun? Is the game fun? I'll let you start with that since I stole all the thunder with the components. The, ga and... the game is not fun. I just oh. don't like it at all. I'm just kidding. It's not uh, true. It's a really great game. I, 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 it's There's so much going on. As I mentioned during the gameplay, the timing element of this game is just brilliant. Like You have to set your students, books, money up to be able to hopefully go up the track the fastest. Like you have this one spot out. We didn't specifically mention it, but this lets you go up three spots potentially if you have, you know, the resources to do it. So you have to have a the bunch black of coins on you this. Yeah. Them, yeah, you have to have the coins uh, on this card. You gotta have a lot of books down here on this card. And you get up here, you gotta have coins, but there's ways to actually, you know, coins times your number, your masters. And one of the cool things about this game is these cards are different every single game. Mm -hmm. There's an A, B, C, D, and E. And there's like, I can't remember, maybe five cards each or something times five different ones. So this dramatically changes at the end of the game. Yeah. Um, you get these bonuses at the end of the track. I really, really like. So setting the timing on all that. But you just have these pools in the game, Dean, where you're like, you want to go here, but man, two masters is really expensive. Can be. I mean, decently expensive, especially early in the game when you don't have extra workers, which you can get right here, which you can get by having your sixth student, or you can get here by uh, fulfilling this requirement, which would be going up to the third thing there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to let you go for a second. <laughs> <laughs> All those things. I, I really enjoy point salad games. Um, I, I like the fact that everything that you're going to do in this game uh, get you points, but also everything that you do matters. And the timing, like you said, is very important. Like if you don't build a strong engine in this game at the beginning of the game, and I I'll go ahead and say this, I, this might be more into final thoughts, I guess, but if you're playing this the first time, you might not love the, love, love the game, which was my experience when I played this. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun, but I was like, wow, this is a really big struggle and I'm not able to really gain any traction. Can, I just feel like every round, yeah. like I'm the Detroit Lions of this game because every round I'm trying to rebuild. Like it's a rebuilding yeah. year. Um, it can be very brutal. It can. This yeah. can be a brutal yeah. game. The first time, I mean, we can just say the first time I killed Dean. The second time he whipped me. Yeah. Like, so he was able to, yeah, anyways. Yeah, but but that is because if your engine like, doesn't get going and someone else's is going, it can be tough. And you might not know intuitively what that looks like. I mean, it is like most games you build a money engine and then eventually you kind of switch that over to a point engine. But this one, it, it doesn't feel that same way. And part of that is because it you think 
you might think that you've built a decent uh, money engine, but you, you might not have as much money as what you think. Because what happens is yeah. you might get a lot of money from your income. Like John, for example, got a lot of money from his income. You're going to spend that right away. Like all of that money you're going to spend on books. And you have to really plan that out well, which is why like the amount of books that you buy is really important too. Because you don't want to overbuy yeah. and not have enough money. But you need to have enough books to be able to take the actions that you want to take, which is really interesting. It takes a lot of planning. Now, the flip then, side of that is it takes a lot of thinking, which could yeah. cause some some analysis paralysis for sure. It sure can. But then you have these cards, like one of this right here that takes coins. It's going to take coins. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so you've got to think through because you, you're this track is pretty important in the game. And mm -hmm. you can't – I don't think you could win by just saying I don't care about this track. Maybe. There's a lot of ways to score points, but – the other player is going to a two-player game. Think, One's going to yeah. score 12. You're going to score zero. You're also going to be last on this the entire game. I think it would be a challenge. And so you have to like you have to plan ahead constantly in this game mm -hmm. and think through, okay, this turn, I've got I, I think I can accomplish this. I can't accomplish that. But you also have to like these cards are really important. Yeah. When you get this, I, I really believe that using these cards to your advantage makes a huge difference. In and the again, the timing of that is important too. You know, so, you want to wait to take this spot, for example. If yeah. you can, wait to take this spot because it moves you up two on the track for free. Well, you don't want to, you know, right now, let's say I moved up on this one. It would cost me two, two ducats. Two ducats is not that big of a deal. What I would want to do is be able to use this whenever I, something's going to cost me 10 or 15 ducats. That's a really know? good example of yeah. how you have to get the, the timing right. And like for me, I get to do lectures for free. So I kind of want to get one of these, you know, I really wanted to take that one so that I could just every round go up the track one, go up the track one, go up the track one and really, really help me out there. So... But all yeah. that to say, like, the beginning of the game is so important, I think. Like, building an engine at the beginning of the game and then sticking with yeah. that, um, kind of going down that path is important, I think. So, yeah, um, I think that that is. And then you have to, you can't spread yourself too thin in this game. Like, it's a point salad, but if you do, then you might never get to this if you want to go for that. You might never get to this worker. You might never get to your students. And if you can't get at least to one extra worker, you're going to really struggle. I mean, yeah. at the end of the game, most of the times I've played, I think I've had all my workers, but. I might not get the last one till the very last turn of the game. And, right, right. And so you can't, yeah, you, you, you've kind of got to focus, but you got to move around a little because you mm -hmm. got to do some lectures. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a puzzle. It really is. Yeah, it definitely, that's, that's great. It's, yeah. it's a puzzle that you're trying to figure out, and it changes every time because of these cards. These cards. Now, these stay the same. The students stay the same. You said there was an expansion that was released right away that I believe offers so. in yeah. new students, um, which even without that, you might think, well, if all the students are the same every game, that's not going to offer a lot of variability. Well, that's just not true because you have a lot of variability yes. in these two cards. It really and changes here, everything up. And the cards you draft at the beginning, there's a lot changes of variability, everything. I think. So what do you think, and then we can go into final thoughts. How do you feel about the player interaction in this game? How do you feel? about you're buying books from me i'm buying books from you in a two-player game we've got ignotus over here and we're kind of racing to maybe yeah. buy his books i want to buy books from john but oh my gosh i don't want to give him more money because then he could get that professor you know yeah i love it's, it yeah i do too and it's really important and and so that one of the tiles allows you to buy from two separate players at a time which is important that's yeah. really important but it the timing of all of that is really really important because like for example John has the one that fills up his bookshelves well I probably want to either buy books for really cheap or if it's going to cost me a little more make sure that I'm going to get more victory points out of sure, it and so yeah. the timing of that it becomes really important of when you buy their books or do you hold off and wait for them to fill up their bookshelves so they're a little bit cheaper final thoughts final thoughts let's go ahead go for it okay I love the puzzly nature of this game. I love the player interaction in this game that we were talking about. Do I buy the books? Do I hold off? Do I give the dean money? Do I give the dean? The dean. It's perfect, perfect game for you. Money uh, right now? Do I hold off and wait and, and see? Do I fill this up right now? Because Or do I hold off like I did in the game and go, I'll just hold off for a minute and with this card and hose Dean and not allow him to buy the books. But then, no, if he buys books, at least I get money for them and I would like to have money for the books. Right. So, like, there's a lot of, like, I feel like fairly positive player interaction because even if he takes my books, I yeah. get money. And that, I, I generally like that in games where it's positive player interaction. Besides blocking people in the spots, that's worker placement. Doesn't bother me at all. So, 
I really love that. I love the timing element. You feel clever in this game when you, and you can feel really dumb too. Whenever, <laughs> whenever you're going, oh, yeah. whenever you're not getting things lined up right and your opponent's getting things, your opponents are getting things lined up correctly. They're screeching up this track. They're getting more students, getting more professors. I asked Dean one thing. Like, I, I do feel like in the games that I've played, when we get to the fifth or sixth round, unless it's, we've had a runaway player a couple times and it's been a little <laughs> bit like, I've been like, yeah. I'm done. And he was like, I'm done. Now, I did play with my with my wife, who didn't like this game, actually, which made me sad, and I won by one point. So there definitely are games where it's super tight. But it's hard to come back whenever someone's leading you significantly in this game. Which, yeah, that for me That would be my only down Negative, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So what do you? What else do you... Oh, you're you're gonna gonna go your oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry, Meeple Town. Um, solid 8.5 out of 10. Yeah. Right now... As of this moment, there's a lot more games to... Uh, there's a game that I have played that I have not rated that I do th- like better than this. But this is really high up there for this year. There's Oh, I thought you said there's a game that you've not played. No, that, that, I, have, no, that, that I have played. That we have, so I don't want to talk about it. But I will say easily one of the best games of the year so far for me. But there's still a lot of year left. But I, I really like this game. And it's also, I will say, uh, with a design team here, that and this and Lorenzo Il Magnifico were pretty close to, for me personally. Um, this is I like this better than Coimbra. It's definitely more thinky than Coimbra. So if you like this more streamlined simplicity, you might like that better. But anyways, yeah, solid. This is really definitely, good game. Definitely is a thinky game. Um, a lot of the same thoughts that you had, I have as well. So that that is a negative. That you know. I, more plays, you're you're all going to get better and better at this one, which, you know... In Theoretically. This, <laughs> in, well, right, that's true. In this day and age, oftentimes we don't really give games that many plays, though. And so the first time I played this game, I'll go ahead and say I scored 45 points, I think, which is And the awful. second time, 150-something. Yeah, so um, <laughs> it, it was a big... I figured it out. I, made it, I figured out my mistakes after that, after that first game. But so... But it was fru- it was a frustrating experience because I kept feeling like, oh, I just need to get this and I need to do this, but then I would do that and not be able to do anything else my turn. But it's not that I didn't like it. It was just like, no, oh, there's nothing really special about this game. But then once you can figure out how to build that engine a lot better, you're going to yeah. do better and it's going to be a much better experience for you. However, like you said, the negative part for me is that... Elites in my games that I've played, it seems like you know who is going to win this game, maybe even kind of early on. Not not like super early necessarily, because some big things that it can it's happen. It's because but. when you have more students and more professors, you're going to get to do more actions, and they're going to be more powerful. It, the the little baby catch up mechanism is that they give you two, right? If you're higher on this, your books are more valuable. Yeah. So if you're if if you can early in the game be higher on this track, have more professors and students. It's going to be hard to beat that player. And if you have a really good but that would engine, be, you don't really care that's true. about that. You know? That's true. So, but so you can just... Yeah. That may be hard to do. Yeah. But all that to say, I still really love this game, and I'm going to give it an eight and a half just like John did. Oh, high five. Uh, Left-handed high five. I'm going to high five you. All right. <laughs> I was going to high five Backhanded face. high five. I was going to I will give this an eight and a half too. This is one of my favorite games of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. This is one of my favorite games of the year. Um... And I was really surprised because when I played this the first time, it is just basic worker, worker placement. But yeah. again, the player interaction really adds a lot to it. The engine building is a lot of fun once you play boards. through it. It's the really player fun. boards, all of that's a lot of fun. The theme is a lot of fun. So I really, really enjoyed is this Is it feel thematic to you? Um, it does kind of to me. It does a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as much as any other Euro does I, like this. I, but I've, I've said, like, playing the game, I remember, like, I'm getting another professor in my university. Or, hey, yeah. we're getting more students to our university. <laughs> It's Not more thematic than Lorenzo, Il Magnifico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what the theme of that is. Like, I don't know. Something about Europe, Europe. Lorenzo. In the, I don't even know. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's an eight and a half from both of us. Really high praise. And actually, this one's going to get a Meeple Town seal. Seal. I think it's our first Meeple Town seal of, of the a, year. Of a 2020 game. Yeah. That's right. I think that's right. All right, so tell people how they can get in touch with us. If you're enjoying our channel, we would love for you to subscribe to it. You can go to MeepleTownGames.com to check out all of our stuff. Go to at MeepleTownGames for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we're Board Game Geek Guild 3407. Thanks for coming down to Meeple Town. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at MeepleTownGames and connect with us on the Meeple Town Guild, Guild number 3407, at BoardGameGeek.com. And also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meeple Town.